Just to check, uh, how would this restructuring exercise affect uh, shareholders, uh, particularly in terms of uh, what are the benefits to bring to the shareholders, also like some of the risks may involve uh, for shareholders? I think that's a, another valid question, obviously. Um, shareholders' expectation from the listed company, obviously, is to have a a reasonable or fair financial return and they want to have a regular dividends, handsome dividends if possible. Uh, to have uh, SPH Media continue to be part of this uh, listed company is likely to uh, mean that uh, the financial performance of SPH Group will be adversely impacted because both revenue and profit from the media business is expected to continue to decline. Uh, so shareholders will be adversely impacted you know, under the current arrangement. Once you have this uh, restructuring concluded, then we believe that shareholders can see better value from the rest of SPH. And apart from that, the lifting of the Newspaper Printing Presses Act conditions that are imposed on SPH in terms of shareholding structures, uh, uh, in terms of uh, other you know, uh, requirements, uh, like for instance having to issue a management share for every new share that you issue, uh, all that will be lifted. You know, the Ministry of communication information and say that they will lift all those uh, requirements on the remaining SPH non-media business. It makes, it makes sense because it's no longer a media company, so why the need to impose those uh, constraints or, or restrictions? Which means that the LISCO will now be uh, able to restructure its capital and its shareholding in such a way as to better optimize what it can do, seek out a new uh, business opportunity, explore ways of further unlocking values for shareholders and uh, providing them with a better return over the, uh, in the following years, you see. I hope that addressed the point that you raised. Okay. Following up on the question of shareholders, usually when companies divest or do spin-off, the shareholders get something in return. In this case, SPH is actually pumping resources and funds and property into SPH media holdings. Mm -hmm. Could you better ex explain to us how this makes economic sense to the shareholders, especially um, they invest in this company because they probably interested in media company, media business in the first place. So in terms of um, expected financial performance improvement, what are we expecting? And second question, for the remaining of the list call, is there going to be a change in name? I mean, people are saying you'll be, no, SPH will be Singapore Property Holdings instead. Thank you. I think that's, that's a very valid question also, that uh, here you are restructuring and uh, transferring the media business into a not-for-profit company limited by guarantee, and you are actually capitalizing the company. So why are you doing that? Why are we doing that? The answer is because the alternative to uh, ensuring that the, the transfer entity, SPH Media, has reasonable chance of uh, succeeding uh, in this new uh, structure um, is that uh, it will remain part of SPH LISCO. That's the alternative. It will remain as part of SPH LISCO and we are operating as business as usual. And then, as I said in my earlier response and in my remarks, it will mean that all the issues, all the difficulty faced by SPH Media will impact adversely on the financial performance of SPH listed company. So, for the shareholders of SPH, this restructuring with the capitalization of the CLG, or rather the capitalization of the newly incorporated whole co, which will be transferred to the CLG, is a way for them to uh, reduce the drag and the burden on the listed company. And hopefully over time, 
the, the remaining company, the LISCO, will be able to explore new opportunities, new investments, and create better value for shareholders and also unlock values for shareholders to benefit, you see. Uh, so I think this is a balanced outcome in the sense that uh, shareholders also should understand that all the assets and uh, well-being of SPH, the group as it is today, came about from the media operation of past years. You see. It is only in recent years that media suffered a decline. Previous years, for most of its 37 years, media was the main contributor. So it's not wrong in that sense to ensure that if we are restructuring uh, media, that media should receive uh, startup grants from the parent company to ensure that it can you know, uh, take off into the future. Yes, that's a, yeah, the list goes name change. Um, I said in my statement that the transfer includes all the intellectual property of the SP, of SPH Media, which will obviously include all the titles, all the mass heads, and also the name SBH, Singapore Press Holding Limited. Uh, so you may ask, why do you want to transfer the name over? Why don't you keep the name? Well, uh, we see it this way. Singapore Press Holding is a name that reflects the principal business of the company when it was founded in 1984 and has been so for most of its 37 years. And uh, with this restructuring, the LISCO will no longer be engaged in media business at all. It will become a property holding company. Okay? Uh, so it does not make sense to try to retain the name Singapore Press Holding in the remaining listed company. On the other hand, the new HOCO and with shareholders' approval transferred to the CLG, they will become the operational entity for the media business. They will be fully committed in carrying out the media business for the in the future. And so the name is far more appropriate for them than it is for the remaining listed company. And that's why we will transfer the name to the, to the whole code. Of course, that leads us with the, another question, uh, which you haven't asked yet, that what is the name for the remaining company? Uh, my answer is that, that we still have time to think about that. We will seek shareholders' approval in due course uh, where we need to, when we come to the stage of having a new name. Can I address the question of why, why, why is this in, is the interest of shareholders? I think, uh, I think uh, given where we are today, given the, the, the declining revenue trend, all right, and, and a relatively the scope for further cost cuts, I think we, we say that we expect the losses that we have seen uh, in the media business uh, today to continue for, for, at least, uh, for at least in the next uh, in immediate future. All right? and in fact, I think we expect uh, perhaps, uh, given where COVID is, uh, some of the losses to widen. All right. So what we are offering to shareholders is, you know, and this uncertainty about the financial performance of the, the media business for the next uh, couple of years is going to be an uh, overhang, it's going to be cast a, a cloud over the, the overall performance of the SPH uh, 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 shares. Now. So I think what we are offering uh, for shareholders is a one-time impact, but we remove this uncertainty. And also, uh, in doing so, uh, if the government uh, agrees, and uh, they have signaled that they have agreed to lift the, 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 the restrictions of MPPA uh, from the company, then I think the, the, the shareholders, together with shareholders, we can now uh, look at how we can uh, uh, restructure the shareholding structures and the capital base to be able to pursue uh, new directions uh, for the rest of the non-media business. Okay, so that's the, really the, the, the what is in it for the shareholders, all right? Removing the uncertainty of the, the uh, possible continual losses with a one-time impact, okay? And then we can, uh, we, and then also I think with the, with the new flexibility of, uh, offered with the lifting of the, the, the restrictions on MPPA, and that's where I think uh, we, we believe that this is a, this is a deal that, uh, uh, the, uh, that is good for, the, for the, the interest of the shareholders.